In this video, we're going to look at some more questions to test your conceptual understanding of one-dimensional motion. Let's start out with an easy one. What does V2 represent in the formula? I'd suggest that each time with these questions, you pause the video and answer it yourself, and then restart the video to see if you got it right. The answer to this one is C, the final velocity. This question is just making sure that you've been doing the work of setting up that table of quantity, symbol, and unit. In other words, in order to understand the formulas, the first thing you've got to make sure of is that you know what each of the symbols means. And so in this formula for average acceleration, we know that V2 represents the final velocity. So again, in your table, you should have an entry that says final velocity, V2 is the symbol, and then the unit of meters per second. Now, in the kinematic formulas, remember that final velocity is now just V. So you've got to make sure that you understand the different variables that we've used. Let's try another one. What does V naught represent in the formula? This equation is one of our four kinematics equations. And remember that when we derived these formulas, we changed our notation so that now naught means initial. So V naught is the initial velocity. And in the same way, we know that x naught would be the initial position, and then x and v would be the final position and final velocity. Here's a more difficult question. A person starts at a point P and stays there for a moment. Then she moves to Q and stays there for a moment. She then runs quickly to R, stays there a moment, and then strolls slowly back to P. Choose the correct position versus time graph. So go ahead, pause the video, and make your selection. Let's look at this together. I want to see which of these we can quickly, which of these answers we can quickly get rid of. So one of the things that you'll notice is our person starts at P, and the farthest they go to the left is over to Q. Notice then that their position is never less than zero. In fact, our person never even gets to zero. Therefore, we can get rid of this graph because that shows the person with a negative position. We can get rid of this graph because that shows a negative position. We can get rid of this one for the same reason. And we can even get rid of this one because it shows our person at a position of zero and our person never gets there. You'll notice now we have a more difficult choice between 2 and 4. They look very similar. Uh, they start correctly at the greatest positive position, which would be point P. Um, they also, you'll notice, get back to that position. Therefore, we've got to look at the details. You'll notice the only difference between these two graphs is the slope of this part of the graph and the slope of this part of the graph. If we now look at the details, we see that our person, she runs quickly to R and then strolls back to P. Therefore, number two is the correct answer because we want her to have a higher velocity as she runs quickly to R and then a slower velocity as she strolls back to P. And of course, we know that to look at the velocity, all we need to do is look at the slope of the position versus time graph. Let's try this question. A train car moves along a long straight track. The graph shows the position as a function of time for this train. The graph shows that the train is doing what? This is a tricky one, often for students when you're first learning this material. 
One of the things that you'll notice I've emphasized is you should always draw graphs. Graphs will help you to understand this. So let's do that. Notice we've got a graph of position versus time here. And our questions are asking about velocity. So what should we do? Well, let's draw a graph of the velocity as a function of time. Remember that to do that, if we want to know the velocity at any instant in time, we simply need to look at the slope of the position versus time graph at that time. So at t equals 0, notice that the slope of the graph is the highest that it's ever going to be. Therefore, our initial velocity is here. Let's look at the slope at another time. Well, at this point on the graph, notice that the slope is definitely less. Therefore, the velocity at that time is less. We look at another time, the slope is even less. Notice it's still positive, and it's always positive. So that might be what the velocity is at that time. And in the last time, you'll notice our slope is still positive. It's getting closer to zero, but it's not there yet. Therefore, here's what our graph would look like. You'll notice, by the way, that this looks like a parabola. We know that when the position versus time is a parabola, the velocity versus time is a straight line. OK, now that we've got that graph, we can see a couple things. We can see that the slope of that graph is negative, and therefore the acceleration is negative. But what else do we, now we've got to pick from these choices. So it definitely um, is slowing down. In other words, the velocity starts at a higher level, and the velocity is decreasing. By saying the acceleration is negative, we mean it's slowing down. So it's slowing down all the time. It's clearly not speeding up. It's not speeding up and then slowing down. And it's definitely not moving at a constant velocity. Try this one. The graph shows the position as a function of time for two trains running on parallel tracks, which is true. OK, well, let's look at this together. First of all, you'll notice that train B uh, is the same graph as we had in the last slide. So what we know about train B is that it's slowing down all the time. Because again, this is a position versus time graph. So the slope of this graph, or of each of these graphs, is going to tell us about the velocity. So let's look at this and see what we know. First of all, Notice that the slope of the position versus time graph for train A is constant. So train A has a constant velocity. And therefore, the acceleration for train A is 0. It's not accelerating. It's moving with a constant velocity. However, we know that train B is slowing down all the time. And as we figured out in the previous question, the acceleration for train B is negative. OK, so let's see what the questions are. At time B, both trains have the same velocity. That's often a common mistake that students make picking that one. If the velocity of the two trains was going to be the same here, what would have to be true is the slope of the two graphs would have to be the same. And clearly, they're not. So they're at the same position at that time, but they don't have the same velocity. We know B is not right, because we know um, train B is slowing down all the time. C is the correct answer. Let's just eliminate D first. Somewhere on the graph, both trains have the same acceleration. We know that's not true, because train A has a zero acceleration, and train B's acceleration is always negative. So it's got to be C. But let's see what that's talking about. Both trains have the same velocity at some time before TB. Well, if they have the same velocity, that simply means they 
the position versus time graphs have to have the same slope. Notice that right at this point, the slope of the graph looks like that. And that's the same as the slope for train A always is. So at this time, you'll notice that the slope of the two graphs is the same. And so at that time, that is when they have the same velocity. A simpler question. If you drop an object in the absence of air resistance, it accelerates at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. If instead you throw it downward, its acceleration after release is. So the answer here is just negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Whether you throw an object up, you throw an object down, or you simply drop the object, once it leaves your hand, the acceleration is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What is it that changes in that case? Well, what changes is simply the initial velocity. So for example, if we want to know what the velocity is at some time after we release the object, we know that, sorry, that's the wrong equation. We know that V is equal to V naught minus GT. So if I throw an object up, that simply means I'm giving it some positive initial velocity. If I just drop an object, I'm giving it, giving it an initial velocity of zero. And if I throw down the object, I'm giving it a negative initial velocity. That's the only thing that changes, but the acceleration doesn't change.